Hi everyone, welcome back to the Akron Zoo. My name is Autumn and today we are talking penguins for your lunch pleasure. Yes, Humboldt penguins to be specific. So we're gonna be hanging out with these guys here for a little while. Now let's talk about penguins in general first. Now penguins are birds. Some people may not recognize that because they are such good swimmers. Some of the ways that we know that they're birds is because they do have feathers. Now it's hard to tell that by looking at them, but I do have some penguin feathers here in my hand that you can get a close look. Hopefully the wind won't blow it away. But yeah, they have tiny feathers that are actually pretty rigid. And these go on sort of like a crisscross pattern on their body. They're really important because about 80% of the penguin's insulation comes from these feathers. Um, they also help provide waterproofing. I dropped the feather. So these are really important for these guys. So they are birds, they've got feathers, and they do lay eggs. Now this is what a Humboldt penguin egg would look like. Now this is not a real egg. It is wooden, um, but it helps to kind of show you the size of what those eggs would look like. And during breeding season, they might lay anywhere from one to three eggs. Um, not that often do we see a three egg in, in a nest. So these guys are definitely birds. They are warm blooded. And one of the biggest uh, maybe confusions of penguins in general is that you do not find any pegu penguins at the North Pole. So a lot of people know about this now. We would not see penguins hanging out with polar bears. These are all South American species. And depending on who you talk to, we've got anywhere from about 17 different species of penguin in the world or 20 different people have different ideas. Um, for example, some people say that the rock hopper penguin, which these guys are not, is one species. Some people will break them into two types, a northern rockhopper penguin and an eastern rockhopper penguin. So again, that clears it up perfectly. But we're just talking about the Humboldt penguin today. These guys are found on the western coast of South America. And they actually live in pretty warm water. Now, it's almost close. Their northern range of their habitat could be close up to the equator. Um, so if it gets too cold or if it gets too hot, they will say, I'm going inside and they will go into their burrows. Now, you're looking right now at Rico. Rico is one of our bachelors. He's pretty young. I, he's about two years old. Almost. Almost two years old. So it took him a year to get his adult feathers. When they're born, they are just all fluffy and gray. Um, they eventually get sleeker feathers and they'll practice swimming, but they stay all gray. And it's not until their first molt that they get their adult feathers, which is that nice pattern. You can tell um, each individual has their own pattern of spots on their belly. I don't know if you can see Rico's pattern yet, um, but unless you spend a lot of time with them, it's really hard to figure out who's who. So we actually put bands on their flippers, on their wings to help us identify them. So on their bands, if they have a black band that looks like this, that indicates that it is a boy. And then a clear band that looks like this indicates that it is a girl. And then we have these little colored tabs and depending on the color arrangement, that tells us who they are. So we know by the orange and blue tabs up there that that is Rico. Rico's gotta talk and let everybody know. So he is a bachelor. Right now, everybody has decided that it's a breeding season. So there may be some breeding going on. There may not be. Everybody's hanging out in their burrows. Um, so we're not quite sure who's doing what back there. 
Um, but out of the group, we've got two bachelors. Everybody else has their mate picked out. That's our other bachelor. And that is Huevo. And you can see that Huevo is a male. You can see that by the black band. And he's got a purple tag, which tells us which one he is. So he just laid down for a little bit. So we do have some flirting going on in the back of their habitat. We've got one of our males, oh, and somebody else came in. They wanted to be part of that, that party there. <laughs> so this is a triangle, it looks like. We'll see what happens here. because We've got two females and one male. All right, so these guys, penguins, are pretty well known for their typical black and white coloration. We often say that they're dressed up in their tuxedo, but that is a really important coloration for where they live. This color is called counter shading. So imagine you are a big old predator, maybe a big shark, out in the ocean, and you're, you're swimming way down deep in the water, and you look up, and you see light water because the sun is shining. So if your belly is white, there's a chance that that shark predator down there, you're not gonna see that penguin up above you. Now, if you're swimming above the penguin and you look down into the deep, dark ocean, chances are you're not gonna see that penguin with that dark feather on their back. So that really helps them blend in and avoid predators like sharks and leopard seals um, and orcas. Those are some of their main predators. Now, these guys, probably about a medium-sized penguin. They get to be um, anywhere from 7 to 12 pounds. They average about 9 pounds. And they can live to be around 16 years old. Um, some of them may live as long as 20 years, but they average about 16 years old. Now, all of our penguins here are pretty, pretty close to the young side. I think our oldest one is around 12. And I can confirm that for you guys. So how much do these guys eat and what do they eat? So I can, I can do the what first. I gotta look up the how much. So out in their native habitat, they're gonna eat krill and fish, um, different things like that here. They, we, their diet primarily consists of fish. So they get two kinds of fish. One type is called capelin. And the other type is smelt. So smelt is more of like your broccoli and your lean chicken, where the capelin is more like your dessert. Oh, sorry, got it wrong. Stop, switch. So the smelt is like the dessert and the capelin is like your healthy dinner. So the, the smelt has a lot more, I'm getting it all confused now. <laughs> the smelt has a lot more uh, higher fat content. So it tastes really good to them. And it's, it's sort of like penguin uh, snacks couch potato food. So they get their smelt um, for treats when they do something special, sometimes just a little bit extra during the day. I do know that they like their fish and these guys, um, probably we, we spend the most on their food with all the fish that come into the zoo for these guys. So are penguins exclusive with their mates? Oh, um, Humboldt penguins do tend to be pretty monogamous. This is a tough thing. Um, there are some species of penguins that, thinking about a good way to put this, um, they use rocks for their nests and the females may um, solicit shall we say, other males for extra rocks for the nest. Um, so although the same male and female will raise the offspring, it doesn't mean that they're 
isn't side action happening? Can for, for Humboldt's, they're pretty much uh, monogamous and they pretty much stay together. Can penguins have more than one egg? Yes, they can have more than one egg. Um, potentially, we could see up to three eggs, although that's not as usual. Um, one to two is the average that we will see. So how many penguin chicks have hatched here at the Akron Zoo, and are any of them still here? Um, so we have had, I don't know the number, but it's I know- It's in the teens. It's in the teens. Um, I've been here a little over 10 years, and not quite one a year um, we've had, but they've been here a lot longer than I have. So yes, we do still have some. Earlier we were checking out Rico, um, and he was hatched out here. He's in the back there. He was hatched out here about two years ago, almost two years ago. Uh, so Elliot is asking um, if we have any eggs right now. And I did check right before this with the penguin keepers. We do not have any eggs, but there's still time in breeding season. Yes, um, no eggs yet, but we still could have some babies this year. We'll have to wait and see. Now, as you guys are watching them, you may hear some of their vocalizations. It's very loud. They actually get another name um, because of their vocalizations. They kind of sound like a donkey braying. So they've had another name called the jackass penguin because they sound kind of like a donkey. But that, that communication is really important. So penguins, they look so similar. Um, to us and even to each other, they, they will look similar. Behaviors and vocalizations are some ways that they can tell each other apart, especially in babies. So when they have babies, you're gonna see one of the parents stays with the baby while the other goes out and looks for food. Um, and the way that they can identify their babies when they come back and the right individuals is by how they act and how they sound. They have a very unique sound, each individual does. So Danny is asking if they get to walk around the zoo since we're closed. Uh, that's a really good question, Danny. Well, these guys are really much more comfortable in their home, in their habitat. If we took them out into the zoo right now, it would be a little scary to them because it's a whole brand new place to go. So right now they kind of hang out where they're comfortable in their house, especially because it's that time of the year when they might be thinking about getting their boyfriend or girlfriend. So Isaiah wants to know what those holes are in the back. Oh, those holes in the back are called burrows. They're in their native habitat. So you'll find them down along the coast of South America. They are, no, it's a really rocky coast. And so year after year after year, penguins live in large group there. And when penguins eat, there's stuff that comes out the other end. It's called guano. We may call it poop. But over time, that builds up. And penguins will actually burrow into that. They'll dig a hole into that guano for a burrow, which is where they nest at. So we do have penguins back in those holes um, right now in their burrows, kind of hanging out probably with their mate. So how long does it take for an egg to hatch? On the egg, and I believe it takes about 90 days for that egg to hatch. Yep. No, so, oh, whoa, I was way off. So it actually takes about 40 days of incubation for that egg to hatch. And so both mom and dad are going to help. Uh, they'll help kind of incubate that egg. Um, and after 40 days, they'll hatch. And the chick is just all fluff and gray. And as the chick grows, he'll lose those fluffy feathers and grow smoother feathers, but they will stay gray for about the first year. Now, after the first year, these guys molt their feathers. So most birds you might see when they molt or lose their feathers, they'll lose a few, then grow them back in. Then later they'll lose some other ones and grow them back in. 
The molting is important because it gets rid of damaged feathers and these guys rely on their feathers to keep them warm and waterproof. Well, Humboldt penguins do something called a catastrophic molt. They will lose all of their feathers within about two to three weeks. If you're ever here during that time of the year, it looks like somebody had a pillow fight and the pillow lost because there's tiny little feathers everywhere in their habitat. And they are also, they build up a lot of energy because when they lose those feathers, they can't hunt. So they will look almost like footballs right before they'll, they molt. They eat a lot because they need that energy to grow those new feathers in and because they're not really gonna eat a lot after they lose those feathers. So that helps them have some fat restores to survive on. They will grow those feathers back. It's probably not the most comfortable feeling for these guys. Um, they're gonna, if you're in here during that time, they often sit with their back to everybody. So they're just not, they look like they're not enjoying the day. But within a couple weeks, their feathers are all nice and shiny and glossy and they're swimming and they're happy as usual. So is their water warm or cold? So their water is slightly warmer than the air. So we do not heat the water, but it does go through a filtration system. And in that process, through that filtration system, there's a slight bit of warming that happens. So it's just slightly warmer than the air. Um, you'll see when it gets super cold out here, they are, no thank you ma'am, not going in the water. Um, today, nobody has decided they feel like swimming, at least so far today. All right, so Rudy is asking if the animals are acting any different now that the people are not able to be here. You know, uh, our animals throughout the zoo are just like individuals, just like you at home. Some people are, are kind of really enjoying spending time at home right now. Others are chomping at the bit because they miss seeing people. So we have animals that are definitely missing you guys. We have animals that are just chilling out and relaxing. So we see different behaviors um, across all of the animals. You know, we, the people that are coming into the zoo and their keepers, we love spending time with them. So they do get some visits, but I'm curious to see how excited they're going to be when you guys can come back in and visit them. So during the day, throughout the year, these guys get enrichment just like some of our other animals do. And they will get anything from, um, I've seen big giant rubber duckies floating in here. Um, they'll get frisbees. Sometimes they'll get ice put in the water. We did a project with a, our local school, the National Inventors Hall of Fame STEM School, and some of the students there actually developed a way for them to get bubbles. And they really enjoyed getting all of those bubbles. They kind of looked after, looked after them and tried to snap at them. So they were really curious about those bubbles. I'm not really sure if they have a favorite or not. I think Amber asked that one. So when is their feeding time? Mia would like to know. So their feeding time, they get fed in the morning and then again in the early afternoon. Those are two of the times that they get fed. Sometimes during feeding time, um, the keeper will bring them in to the back. There's a little gate over here um, and they'll go back there and each one will step on the scale while they get their food. And that gives us a chance to make sure that their weights are consistent, that they're doing well and being healthy. That also makes sure um, that each one is getting the amount of food that they need. They'll also get vitamins in their fish and that makes sure that each one gets their vitamins as well. So Elliot is asking, do all penguins swim? Do all penguins swim? Yes. Penguins are perfectly designed for swimming. You'll just find them swimming in different parts of the ocean. Some like colder water, some like warmer water. You can actually find penguins at the equator on the Galapagos Islands. 
All right, so we get to do something fun today. So today I have the penguin chocolate, which is smelt, if I can remember that right. For some reason, I am not keeping that right in my head. So let's see if we can encourage anybody to come down here and go swimming with us today. Oh, interest, oh, treats. Oh, who went in there first? Can't quite tell. All right, so you get a chance to see them swimming. They can actually reach speeds of up to 15 miles an hour while they're swimming, which is about four times faster than Michael Phelps, and then the fastest human swimmer. You guys are missing out if you're staying over there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I was going too slow. So you can see, so their body shape is like a torpedo. Scientifically, it's called fusiform, and that helps them swim through the water really fast. All right, guys, I am out of fish. Are there any last questions that anybody has burning that they want answered? Do penguins, um, can they live in hot environments? So it depends on the penguin. Um, they do not like super hot environments. So we have seen here, when we have days of like 80 degrees, they want to stay inside. We put out misters for them to help them cool down. So they would not be too happy if it was super hot environment. So Leo is asking, do we have special activities that we do for them? Do we have, yes, we have special activities that we do with them. Um, we do anything from training with them, and that could be stepping on a scale. Uh, sometimes we let people come in and visit them behind the scenes, uh, which creates a different environment for them, new things for them to see and do. Uh, we'll put different toys in there to let them have different uh, experiences. Um, some of them are more interested than others in some of those toys, just like us. We like some toys better than others. So. Tykera, and I'm so sorry if I said that wrong, wants to know how all of the animals are doing right now. The animals are doing good, just like you. Um, they all have different personalities. So some of them are definitely missing seeing all of your faces here at the zoo. Some of them are just chilling out. Now these guys right now are in breeding season. So we're seeing some flirting going on in here today and they might be more concerned about their mate than uh, even us standing out here. So how deep can penguins go and how long can they hold their breath? That is a good question. I'm gonna have to look that one up. We might have to get back to you on that one and answer that later today while we look that up. A lot of these questions we have already answered, so I encourage you guys to go back and make sure you watch the full video um, to hear your questions get answered. All right, guys. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed lunch with the penguins today. Um, I know they enjoyed having their special treats and talking out here. We started off with only three penguins out to see us, and I think everybody's out. Uh, visiting us and hopefully you will join us again tomorrow and see who we go to visit tomorrow. Bye!